Thanks, Nelly. My name is James Pepper, uh, Chair of the Vermont Cannabis Control Board. Today is Wednesday, November 29th, 2023. It's 1 on 1 p.m. and I call this meeting to order. Uh, just a quick recap. Um, we uh, last week held the third meeting of the Act 65 Working Group. Actually, it was a week before, I think, um, uh, which has been tasked with improving the medical program. The primary focus of this meeting was uh, testing and labeling of medical products. Uh, we spoke with Dr. Ari Kirschenbaum about um, how cannabinoids and terpenes interact with the endocannabinoid system. We spoke with a number of existing adult use retailers and medical dispensary owners about um, what they would like to see legislatively in order to better serve patients. Um, you can watch this meeting and all of the other Act 65 meetings on our YouTube channel. Just type VTCCB uh, in the search bar. Um, it'll pop up on YouTube. Um, the fourth and final meeting will take place on December 7th uh, from 8 a.m. through 10 a.m. Um, the links to join will, are available on the events calendar page of our website. The focus uh, of this last meeting will be um, how the use of cannabis and cannabis products is communicated to patients and patient providers. We're also going to review the patient um, survey uh, that we did, some of the responses to that, and then um, also take a look at the actual draft recommendations that will be included in our report back to the legislature. We um, really encourage anyone uh, who's interested in the medical program to attend if possible. Um, if you can't make that time, you can always share your thoughts about the medical program by emailing ccb.med, M-E-D, at vermont.gov. And uh, other than that, just uh, need to approve the minutes from our last meeting, um, which was on October 25th, 2023. So moved. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, looks like we have a lot on the agenda today. Um, Bryn, I think I'll turn things over to you to discuss pre-qualification. Okay. So I just have a, a few slides um, to look at as we talk about pre-qualification, what it is, what it means. Um, <clears throat> so here we go. The pre-qualification process. This is um, a new process that the licensing team has developed um, that is really drawing on everything that they and we have all learned in this last year and a half of um, issuing light of issue, going through the licensing process, the application process, issuing licenses to the new businesses. Um, and this new process is uh, drawing on what we've learned and really providing sort of wraparound support and services and technical assistance to um, new applicants for a cannabis establishment license. So this process significantly does not apply um, for renewals, doesn't apply for um, an existing licensee that is applying for another additional different type of license. It only applies for new applicants um, that are applying for a new license. Um, and it takes this approach that uh, we've learned over the last year and a half, um, and it really institutes a full-throated support system for uh, ushering a new business through the application process. Um, so I'm going to talk, I'll start out by uh, listing a few of the objectives of this pre-qualification process. Um, it's going to create a collaborative space for new applicants and um, a whole host of CCB staff to work together on the application process. Um, the purpose is really to assist these new applicants in understanding not only the full scope of requirements um, that we that apply to obtaining their license, but also to maintaining their license. How do you remain compliant um, in the cannabis industry? It helps applicants understand um, the viability of their business plan. We help them evaluate that. Um, it also allows us to assess early on in the process what the priority status of the applicant is to make sure that they are 
both appropriately prioritized through the licensing process, but also to connect them early on, um, to connect social equity applicants early on with both technical support that's provided through the agency of um, the ACCD, uh, and also connect them with the funding that's available through um, that agency. Uh, another objective is to pro provide preliminary state approval um, for applicants that are qualified for it. And then lastly, to offer one-on-one -on -one support um, with CCB staff to ensure that their application, their full application for a license is complete um, within the appropriate time frame once they have achieved pre-qualification. Um, so those are the objectives. And now I'll go into um, a little bit more about um, what it will achieve. So some of the benefits to pre-qualifying, um, like I said on the previous slide, we've got, uh, it offers preliminary state approval um, of a business. So that is um, done by both evaluating the viability of their business plan. Um, and also that sort of preliminary state approval can help the applicant in attracting financing if they need financing for their business. Um, it also provides one-on-one -on -one regulatory support from CCB staff, and that includes licensing staff um, in completing their full license application. It includes compliance staff to help them understand what um, the rules are, what they will need to do to maintain their compliance once they do have their license. Um, also connects them with advertising staff to provide um, overview and information about what uh, the advertising requirements look like. Um, and also product registration staff to help them understand um, what is required for product registration. So people can get early on in the process, they can get sort of a more complete um, picture of, of what regulation in the cannabis industry looks like. Um, also, licensing staff is going to provide a roadmap for these applicants um, so they understand both the pre-qualification process and the full application process right at the outset. So before um, a person is halfway through the process um, and they realize they've still got halfway to go, they're going to know right from the outset how long it's going to take and what will be asked of them during, during the process. Can I ask a question about the evaluation of viability of the business? What is? Can you talk a little bit more about what that means? I mean, I assume that we're not going to evaluate whether or not it's a like a good idea and whether or not it will be a successful idea, but whether or not it would make it through the application process, is that the... That's right, whether or not it will make it through the application process. Also, I think um, we can provide some sort of a, a, an understanding of what it costs to operate in the cannabis industry. And um, and based on uh, the business plan, sometimes we can uh, provide some <clears throat> sort of a, of a picture of whether or not they could be successful um, in the industry based on what their business plan looks like. Um, a little bit more description about the technical support that we are providing. Um, and this uh, slide sort of gives sort of a picture of, of, what, of what the licensing team was thinking about as they were uh, proposing this new process. The idea here is really that um, the licensing team has learned a lot about um, what is required to best support applicants and they have come up with an understanding that there are lots of different learning styles out there and people um, are some people are best suited to have written material, some people are best suited to come into the office and have one-on-one um, -on -one sort of in-person support, um, some people do best with videos, so um, there's been sort of a comprehensive set of documents and materials that the licensing team has developed in order to support people through the process. Um, so having these access to these materials in combination with uh, meeting one-on-one -on -one with staff is going to help um, applicants be better prepared for the complexities of the cannabis market. Um, all of these materials will be linked from the website and staff are also going to distribute them in their meetings so people will not have to, people who might not be as skilled at navigating the website will um, be sort of handed these materials right, right off the bat in, in their introductory meeting. Um, we've also translated some introductory materials into 11 different languages and applicants will also learn early on that they may receive translation services, um, both for the materials and also during meetings um, if, they, if they ask for it. Um, and then that list down there is, are, is, a, is a list of some of the materials that the licensing team has put together um, as a part of this process. 
and then a little overview um, of what this pre qualification process will look like. So, once a new applicant submits their pre qualification application, um, staff are going to schedule uh, either a Teams meeting, um, virtual meeting, or an in person meeting to review the application with um, the applicant. And at the same time, the background check process will begin. So um, very early on, we uh, will start that process because that usually tends to be what takes the longest. Um, staff is going to assign priority status during that initial meeting. Um, and then social equity applicants will get contact information for um, the technical assistance provider from ACCD. Um, staff will also, this is also the point where we will conduct a social equity interview. Um, and assess the application and license fees that would apply for that applicant. Um, staff are going to also review the timeline uh, for outdoor and mixed cultivation applicants in order to ensure that a timely submission of their full application is achievable for that applicant um, so that they can meet the deadline for planting that season. We'll talk more about that on the next slide. Um, and then the the bullets at the bottom are the are the area the topic areas that staff are going to cover in that meeting, um, and they will also receive a follow up email. So every applicant has um, an opportunity to hear and also see in an email um, sort of what what the full application process looks like. So <clears throat> any requirements for the either contained in the application that are specific to a license type and tier are reviewed. Um, what the licensee can actually do with the license they're applying for is also reviewed. Um, and this is hopefully going to have the effect of limiting the situations where a person applies for, a uh, business applies for one type of license and then sort of halfway through decides that they um, need to apply for a different type. So that sort of um, situation will hopefully be uh, avoided by that. Um, full background check, technology requirements, insurance, and banking requirements. Um, the requirements from the Division of Fire Safety, um, municipal compliance, what that looks like, and, and encouraging applicants to collect, connect with their municipalities early on, um, any location and site requirements, uh, timelines, what the timelines look like for submitting their full application, and then an overview of um, product registration, advertising, and inventory tracking requirements, and then contact information. Staff. Okay. Is the pre-qualification submission form similar to our early iteration where you don't need to necessarily you don't need to necessarily know where your business is going to be located? I mean a lot of people do, but um you, know, you just need to essentially have a plan and a name and an address. That's correct. And a background check, yes. A name for your background check. So it's very similar to the original pre-qualification application. Right. Yep. Yeah, a list of principles so that we can conduct your background checks. Thank you. Okay, so this is um, the proposed timeline uh, for pre-qualification. For the, and this timeline is limited to the outdoor and mixed cultivation applicants. Um, and the idea here is that, as we're going to see in a few minutes in the executive director report, um, the timeline for initial licensure for cultivation applicants. Uh, applicants um, covers around 90 days, um, and that's been pretty consistent um, for the last year. So there are special timing considerations for outdoor and mixed um, cultivation licensees to ensure that we are issuing those licenses in time for the growing season. Um, so in order to ensure that our team can really hold these applicants through the pre-qualification and application process, in time for spring planting, we need to enforce some timelines. Um, so this schedule will allow outdoor and mixed cultivators to become licensed prior to the time that they need to plant. Um, so we are not in a situation that we were in in year one where, um, where we weren't doing that. Um, <laughs> um, so the, this proposed timeline would look like this December 1st, is the date that the pre-qualification window opens for all initial applicants. Um, and a pre-qualification certificate is typically going to be able to be issued by staff within a month, um, assuming that there are no presumptively disqualifying offenses of any of the principals or controllers of the business. Um, March 1st, the application window 
uh, for outdoor and dikes cultivation licenses would close. Um, so everybody who had submitted their application prior to March 1st would be in the door um, and they would need to achieve technical and administrative completeness by April 1st. And that way they could be on the docket for the May board meeting um, by May 8th, which is that sort of the, so they'd have to have their site visit prior to May 8th um, and be on the docket for the, the May board meeting. And then at the end of May um, is when that would be the board meeting where all of the um, applications for outdoor or mixed um, would need to be approved. And then in early June would be the issuance deadline. Sometimes it takes a couple of weeks for um, people to finalize things in order to get issued. And then um, any incomplete applications would be dismissed. So again, this timeline would be true only for new outdoor and mixed cultivation applications. And uh, when you say new, does that mean people who have not hit the submit button at all? Like they, they're not anywhere in the application process. They haven't started an app. Like what does new actually mean? People who haven't started an application at all, or is it people who are somewhere in a process? It means um, people who have not submitted an application. Okay. For that license type, like if I was a cultivator and I decided I want to become a retailer as well, do I have to go through pre call? No, no. So that um, is it. Sorry. And we would have to vote on this on the proposal to close March 1st. This is the proposal. Um, so, yes, as as you know, um, when you closed um, application windows in the past, you voted on that. Um, so it would be something that you guys would like to discuss at this meeting and maybe vote on it at your next meeting. Great. Thank you, Bruce. Sure. Yeah. I really like this plan. I think yeah. if we'd had all the time in the world to set up pre-qualification that first time around, we probably would have done something just like this or somebody yeah. would have done something just like this. It's great. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> well, no, I was just going to say that I feel like it might feel like this is a big hurdle at the outset, but it just, you know, it puts people on a live path mm -hmm. and, uh, afterwards. So. Yeah, I mean, everybody, especially <clears throat> our new licensees at this point in the game, I'm sure, are coming into it with various different starting points and specific levels of expertise, right? I'm sure some folks are, are good at growing, maybe not as familiar with running a, a business and vice versa. You know, I think this could help work through our process, but also what they need to do from a B2B perspective mm -hmm. and, and, and reaching out to, you know, people up and down the supply chain and not expect that somebody's going to come and pick up something on their doorstep that they grew, even if it's really awesome, you still gotta forge some of those relationships. Will the fees be the same? Fees will be the same. Yes. And that pre-qualification fee applies to your alternate application fee. So um I think that the way that we are proposing to do this immediately is that the application fee is the only fee that will apply okay. for the full application. Gotcha. Great. All right. And okay. then do we want to discuss while we're, because it's so close to tied to it, I don't think we should vote today because we haven't noticed the vote, but the, um, this notion of closing the window for new outdoor and mixed year cultivation. Um, and again, the rationale, we did this this year. Mm -hmm. It was in effect this year. The rationale, again, Brett mentioned it just now, is we don't want to get into a position where someone submits an application for an outdoor cultivation for the first time on July 1st, it takes us 90 days to process it. We're issuing a license in November mm -hmm. and it's almost worthless. Um, so, um, no, there's, you know, it just puts us in a bad position. It puts applicants in a bad position. So what we did last year is we closed it between, I think, November 30th and- um, June 1st, I believe. So we're moving up a couple months. Yeah. yeah, and that was not enough time. I think yes. we learned this year, so that's why we're proposing to move it earlier. Right. So um, we're all kind of in agreement that we should probably do that again. Yes, I do. Like, if that's something we're going to do every year, I think we should be relatively consistent going forward. Like, if we choose March, then it should just kind of always be February, March, April, sure. not changing yes. it significantly every year. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Well, why don't we um, postpone a vote on anything in that nature until the next meeting, and people want to comment on that, yeah, feel free at this time. Hey, okay. anyone for it? No, thanks, Rick. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Are we ready for? Yeah.
Yes. So yeah. there's another two. Okay. <clears throat> Right, so here is your November executive director report. It will start with um, a summary of our public engagement. So in the last month, um, we had some significant public engagement, or actually a licensee engagement, with our first series of um, licensee education seminars. So we, for the for all of our cultivators, we held our first um, seminar um, as required by rule. And those were held um, in early November. We also held a training on the amended rules one, two, and four. Our general counsel held that training, and that was recorded and posted on our website. And the link will be in this report, um, which will also be posted to the website. Um, and coming up in the next month, we have, as the chair mentioned um, in his opening remarks, we have the last medical program study committee meeting um, on December 7th. And we have another um, education session, which will be held on December 13th, and that will um, be an opportunity to look even closer at the pre-qualification process. Likely it will be um, some of what I went over just now, but um, we'll have some more information there too, and there will be an opportunity for folks to ask questions. Um, so that'll be 10 o'clock in the morning on the 13th. Um, so as I mentioned, that education and enforcement series, um, our, our first our first seminars held on November 7th and November 9th. Um, all told, we had about 60% of all of our principals and controllers of cultivation instances attend these meetings. Um, compliance is currently doing the scoring. We did hold a um, um, we had sort of a quiz during the training so that we could assess people's um, attendance, both their attendance and also sort of their learning during the training. Um, so the compliance team is going through uh, the responses and scoring them, and we're also reviewing the list of principals and, and controllers and identifying who did not take the training so that we can appropriately follow up with those folks. So more to come on that. I'll move into the adult use program data now. <clears throat> so we're going to start with, we've got a few slides that um, we're revisiting our sort of internal metrics on how long it's taking us to um, process applications. Um, and we're looking specifically in these first couple of slides, in this first slide at least, um, what our average days are from submission to approval for cultivation applications. Um, so cultivators, obviously the bulk of our licensees um, and our, as you can see, we broke it out by standard and social equity here. So in November of this year, our average time with those app applications in total is 91 days, very similar to what it was in January, 90 days. Um, and in January, it was, um, we had about, actually, yes, our renewal applications, sorry, um, all renewal applications for standard applicants are taking us about 66 days to process for cultivation licensees. Um, and then you can see the comparison with social equity. So um, we're uh, about 59 days on average for social equity applicants to process their cultivation applications, um, very similar to where we were at in January of 60 days. And um, we're about 20 days fewer for the renewal applications for um, social equity cultivation licensees. So holding pretty steady there. Um, and this is interesting. Uh, we did a we did breakdown um, here of days to approval. Um, the number of days that we, that the CCB staff had the application versus the number of days that the applicant had the application. And, um, and I'll show you the slide, the next slide, I'll show you the, um, the way this looked several months ago in April. Um, so it looks now like our applicants are becoming much more responsive um, to their, when the ball is in their court, and it's taking um, our staff a little bit longer uh, to process these applications. But you can see in April, um, average days to approval, very similar, but um, the majority of the time 
the, the majority of that time, days to approval was, was with the applicant as opposed to with CCD. So the good news is, is that our applicants are becoming much more um, responsive. That's great. So I'm going to move into the numbers now. Um, here are our issued cultivation licenses by type and tier. Um, got our, we've got our numbers. Here's our manufacturer licenses by tier. These are all issued licenses. <clears throat> our um, tier three manufacturing numbers are creeping up there. And then our other license types. So we are at 72 retailers at this point. Um, and then I think the next are applications and process. So here's our numbers that are incoming. Um, you can see there is one indoor tier four that is in the queue. And 13 retailers. Um, and here is our number of cultivation renewals by type and tier. So these numbers are sort of growing month by month um, as we process our cultivation renewals. This is total, not just this month, but all renewals. That's right, all cultivation renewals. That's why these numbers are growing. And some of it, if you're looking carefully at these numbers, some of the renewal numbers are look a little different from the initial issued license numbers um, because people are changing tier. Um, so the, for example, like tier four mixed, I think that there were none originally, but or maybe it's tier three. But anyway, some of the numbers are a little different based on people changing, changing tier. Are most people going up in tier of cultivation or are there some folks who are dropping down? Most people are increasing size. Some are dropping, most people are not. And we're happy to get some information on that at the next meeting, that would be helpful. All right, I'm jumping around here. Um, here's our other renewals by type and tier. So we're starting to issue renewals for retailers and manufacturers. Um, so these numbers obviously will also grow over time. Here's the, here's what we've got in the, in process for renewals. Quite a few um, applicants are in, in the process of the renewal. So I'm gonna move on to our retail locations. This is our areas of density table. Um, we've changed the way the team has changed the way they're reporting this um, information a little bit. So now we are including an area of density is considered anywhere with two or more locations, either licensed or in the queue or combined. Um, so we're, it's going to be, it's a little bit longer of a list. It's on two pages now. Um, so it gives you sort of a, a deeper picture of where we're seeing some areas of density. So still the majority um, have two, and obviously there's some, some significant outliers with Burlington, um, just Burlington. Morrisville has the second most. Okay, here's our map. Doesn't look all too different from month to month. Um, still seeing quite a bit of geographic diversity, unless you zoom in and then you see some um, dead zones. <clears throat> and here's our Burlington map. Be more, more dense in that one little mm -hmm. area there. Okay, I'm gonna move on to our, um, some data about our licensees that are not renewing now. Um, so I presented, I think, some initial information about this at the last meeting. Um, this number has grown uh, a little bit, eight. It's increased by eight since the last meeting of licensees that have confirmed with us that they are not renewing their license, so they are relinquishing their license. Um, we're up to 29 at this point. And um, here I break, I break it down by um, their priority status. So you can see the majority are standard licensees, 65% um, of them are standard licensees, 25% are economic empowerment, 
and 10% are social equity. And to give you an idea of how that compares to um, our full group of licensees, um, we've got in total, 63% of our licensees are standard priority status, 21% are economic empowerment, and 16% are um, social equity. So the number of, um, you know, the numbers are, are, are sort of, initial number is pretty small, but um, so far the numbers of uh, licensees that are not renewing are um, fewer social e equity and economic, economic empowerment than who we have licensed. Um, this is our data regarding the rationale for relinquishing the license. So our compliance agents are conducting exit interviews um, with the licensees that are relinquishing. Um, and this is our compilation of the reasons that they list for relinquishing their license. Um, and this hasn't changed much since the last time I presented it to you, except for the two new reasons have been added and that's profitability and lack of time. Um, but again, they are primarily uh, personal reasons for relinquishing the license. And to try and dig into that a little bit more, um, we ask what are the what were the factors that contributed to the decision to relinquish? Um, and again, we're, we're these are early early numbers, so um, we don't have a lot to work with. But what we do have here indicates that there the majority of those reasons are other and don't have anything to do with um, cost of either the license um, or the cost of regulation or the ability to hire and retain employees or just a or just a plain straightforward lack of resources. How do we um, gather this information? Is it like a survey that we send out? Is it something that our compliance team is asking? It's an interview with your compliance agent. Just curious. Yes. Yeah. I'm compliance. wondering if we're getting like a hundred hundred percent response rate to these questions, or if it's only some people that are answering them. But no, we're not. But I but I think that there's we will get closer to that over time. Um, okay. I think that you know the compliance team has been really incredibly busy with renewal work over the last mm -hmm. four weeks, um, and there is an there. With time, um, yeah. in the fullness of time, we will have a more complete picture. Sure. Um, but since they are conducting these interviews, rather than we're just sending yeah. a survey, um, I think we have a better response rate. Excellent. <clears throat> okay. So moving on to license canopy capacity, here are the numbers for this month. Um, a slight reduction here since the last month, around 20,000 square feet of outdoor. Um, around 8,000 square feet of indoor reduction. And here is the capacity versus utilization comparison. Um, the, there's no change to the utilization numbers this month. Um, we're still basing these projections on an analysis of just under 15% of the licensed um, grow capacity. So no change to these numbers this month. Okay, uh, I'll move on to the compliance data now. Um, I did remove the advertising slide that I normally go over just because we look at that month to month and there really is not much of a change to that. So I think we'll look at that more on a biannual basis from now on, unless there's any desire to see it more frequently. Um, so the last month, the compliance work, this is sort of a summary of compliance work over the last month, 16 new complaints. Um, Eight new investigations. Uh, investigations have been centered around the retail ID check requirement, the point of sale flyer distribution requirement, compliance with the requirements of an employee ID card, the THC cap, and manufacturing without a license. Um, there have been two observation of product destruction um, due to the relinquishment of a license. And two notices of violation have been issued. One was for working with an expired employee ID card, and one was cultivation without a license. Um, and then one corrective action plan was issued um, to address compliance with requirements from fire safety. So that's your uh, picture of compliance over the last since the last board meeting. And then I'll move to our medical program data. So um, 
this is some exciting news. Uh, I'm sure you'll all remember well the days that we were hovering right around 30 days to process our medical applications. So we're down to one day now. Um, our staff are processing those applications for both a patient card or a cannabis caregiver application um, in one day on average. That's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Uh, so the good news comes first, and then the bad news comes second, which is that we continue to have a downward tra trajectory here. Um, here's our total numbers over the last year and a half. Um, we've lost 87 patients um, since the last board meeting and three caregivers. So um, I think that after the, after the medical program stakeholder group, um, develops its recommendations and reports on its recommendations. We might um, put a, we might not report every month on the medical program numbers until um, some of those recommendations have been implemented. And then we'll take a look again. Mm -hmm. So um, that is all in my report. The next thing I have are recommendations for licensure, and it's my recommendation that the yeah. board. Um, take a deliberative session to consider some of the um, applications that um, staff is presenting to you this month. Okay, and do we need a motion to adjourn to deliberative session? Yes. yes. It's just deliberative session that we're talking about. Deliberative session, not exactly. second. Uh, it would be some sort of executive session. So I think there's one you can yes. suggest the language. Sorry about that. Yep, there it is. Hang on. Are you ready for a motion? <laughs> okay. I move that the board entered into a closed session to facilitate confidential attorney-client communications, as well as to discuss matters non-public pursuant to 1 VSA 316, specifically trade secrets and personal information concerning applicants. Second. Any discussion? No. Nope. All in favor? Aye. 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 So um, I know we don't necessarily have to do this, but I I do want to just note like the issues that we have to discuss relate to applicants um, and has some pretty um, sensitive information involved. Uh, I've looked at some of the background documents, and it, they seem like this might lead to some conversation. Um, so I think we had on the agenda that this would take 45 minutes. That's probably about right. Um, so why don't we just say we're going to come back at 225? 30? 225. 225. Okay. And uh, we might go a little bit longer, but we'll aim for 225. And Nellie, if you wouldn't mind putting up a, um, just our away message. Yep, can do. All right, thank you.
this meeting is being recorded and or transcribed. You've been muted. To unmute yourself, press star six. Me and my computer. All right, uh, we're back from uh, deliberative session. Again, it's uh, Vermont Cannabis Control Board, Wednesday, November 29th, 2023, and it's 2.29 p.m. So during our session, we heard some very confidential information about a number of uh, proposed um, applicants uh, and ID, employee ID issues. Um, we didn't take any action in executive session, but I think we're ready to um, take action now. So, Bryn, I'll turn things over to you. For okay. Recommended, recommended staff recommended approvals. Great. Um, so we, I'm I'm going to be reading our approvals for. Um, I'm going to be reading our approvals. Uh, for both uh, initial licensure and renewal this week, and we will update um, the executive director report and post it online later this afternoon. Um, but I'm going to have to go through and read them for today. Um, so everybody settle in, because it's a long list. Formatting issues, so many of them. Yes, um, has some, yes, last minute formatting issues. Okay, so King Cola um, is approved for renewal. Uh, this is an indoor tier one cultivator. Old School Weed Company also approved for renewal for outdoor tier two cultivation. Green Mountain Scientific approved for renewal for a tier three manufacturing license. Cave Lion approved for renewal of a mixed tier one cultivation license. Hidden Valley Farm approved for renewal of a mixed tier one cultivation license. 802420 approved for their initial retail license. Green Mountain Dreams approved for renewal of an indoor tier one cultivation license. Waterbury Falls Manufacturing approved for their initial tier two manufacturing license. Seven Bees Farm approved for renewal of a tier one mixed cultivation license. <clears throat> Family Tree approved for renewal of a tier two manufacturing license. Green Mountain Gold, approved for renewal of an outdoor tier one cultivation license. Capital Cannabis Company, approved for renewal of a retail license. The Cannabis Collective, approved for renewal of a tier two manufacturing license. BVS Labs, approved for renewal of an indoor tier one cultivation license. Grass Queen, approved for renewal of an indoor tier two cultivation license. Hella Good, approved for initial um, manufacturing tier one license. GMT Genetics, uh, approved for renewal of a mixed tier one cultivation license. Honey Tree Farm, approved for renewal of a mixed tier one cultivation license. One Drop Farm, approved for initial tier one indoor cultivation license. Green Mountain Cultivators, approved for an initial indoor tier one cultivation license. Ilia Processing, approved for renewal of a Tier 3 manufacturing license. Green River Cannabis Company, approved for renewal of an indoor Tier 1 cultivation license. Tea Time Herbal Company, approved for renewal of an outdoor Tier 1 cultivation license. High Noon Cultivators, approved for renewal of an outdoor Tier 1 cultivation license. Higher Heaven, approved for initial Tier 1 manufacturing license. Holland Cannabis, approved for renewal of a mixed Tier 2 cultivation license. High Fidelity, approved for an initial retail license. Satori Investment Partners, approved for renewal of an outdoor Tier 5 cultivation license. Satori Investment Partners, approved for renewal of a wholesale license. 
Satori Investment Partners approved for renewal of the Tier 3 manufacturing license. Pine Cannabis approved for an initial indoor, indoor Tier 1 cultivation license. <clears throat> New England Cannabis Partners approved for an initial Tier 2 manufacturing license. Horseshoe Farms approved for renewal of an outdoor Tier 2 cultivation license. Kingdom, <clears throat> Kingdom Kind approved for renewal of a retail license. Altitude Cannabis approved for renewal <clears throat> of an indoor Tier 1 cultivation license. Green Heron Farm approved for renewal of an outdoor Tier 1 cultivation license. Meters approved for renewal of an indoor cultivation Tier 3 cultivation license. Rootland Cannabis approved for renewal of a mixed Tier 1 cultivation license. Mood Food approved for an initial Tier 2 manufacturing license. Something Wicked Cannabis Company approved for an initial retail license. Lamoille Valley Extraction Solutions approved for renewal of a mixed Tier 1 cultivation license. Vermont Patients Alliance approved for renewal of an integrated license. Cannabis Dreams Nursery approved for renewal of a mixed Tier 1 cultivation license. <clears throat> um, Park Rec LLC approved for renewal of a wholesale license. Flora Cannabis approved for renewal of a retail license. Um, and Rebel East Vermont, oh, sorry. Um, and that is it. Thank you. Right. Okay, I'm going to move to um, our two recommendations for denial of an initial license. Those are found on this slide here. THC Sisters applying for a retail license, Be Well Vermont applying for a retail license. Staff is recommending these two businesses be denied. Um, for their initial license. And um, lastly, staff have two recommendations for um, employee ID card applicants. Submission number 4396, staff is recommending denial of an employee ID card for the submission as they don't meet the criteria for overcoming presumptive disqualification pursuant to board rule 1113. And submission number 4340, staff is recommending approval of this employee identification card is this applicant does meet the criteria for overcoming presumptive disqualification under the same rule. And that is your list for this week. Thank you. Sorry for the. So I think the order of operations is um, that the board should approve the staff recommendations for approval and then do the three denials individually. Yes. Okay. That's a good plan. So, yep. I move that the board accept each of the recommendations for uh, new licensure and renewal as presented to us by the executive director in this meeting, including the ID card application 4340. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, and then I move that we enter the recommended proposed decision relative to the retail establishment application of Be Well Vermont, Inc. I will second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I move that we enter the recommended uh, the recommended decision relative to the retail establishment application of THC Sisters LLC denying that establishment application for reasons stated in writing. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, I move that we enter the recommended decision relative to submission four three nine six denying that ID card application for reasons stated in writing. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Okay. Yeah. All we have left is public comment. So um, handle this the same way we always do. If you have a comment, um, you join by the link. Please raise your virtual hand. We'll do our best to uh, call on you in the order that you raise your hand, and then we'll move to people that join by the phone. Um, we've had, oh, there we go. EES is first up. That's your virtual app. EES, you are unmuted, but we can't hear you. All right, they've lowered their hand. 
Any comments from uh, people that joined via the video? Okay. Um, if you've joined via phone and would like to make a public comment, you can unmute your phone by hitting star six. There is currently nobody joined by phone. Okay. Last call for a public comment. All right, well, I'll close the public comment window. Um, again, Bryn will have the list uh, posted. Um, you know, this will be up on YouTube for all the people who got approved today. Um, you can go back and listen to the list. Um, congratulations to all of you. We do have some bittersweet news. I should have mentioned it at the top uh, of the meeting. Um, our dear employee number one, zero, zero, one, <laughs> um, Nellie Marvel is moving on to bigger and brighter futures, greener pastures, although what could be greener than the <laughs> And um, that's starting on Monday. Uh, so, you know, she's not getting a break in between one roller coaster and another, um, but even incredible support to us, you really kind of are just as much a part of the board as the, you know, everyone here, um, you know, in building this thing at it from scratch. So thank you for everything that you've done for us. And um, we wish you all the best, Nelly, and don't be a stranger. Yes, thank you, Nelly, employee number one. Those <laughs> days were crazy and you kept us in line and on track. So immensely grateful for all of your contrib contributions to building this, this ship. I'm still in denial. I don't really want to talk about it, but I am very proud of Nellie and all that she's accomplished and done for the board. And your trajectory has been fun to watch and it will be fun to continue to watch you rise. Best of luck. And congratulations to everybody, including Nellie. Okay. All right. With that, I will adjourn the meeting. Thanks, everyone.